What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today is another installment of Macro Monday here on the channel, where I review a beer from a macro brewery or a macro-esque beer from a craft brewery. And the beer I'm reviewing today comes from Carlton and United Breweries, and they are under the Asahi Breweries umbrella, and they are headquartered in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and this is their Foster's Lager. So this American adjunct lager that comes in at 5% alcohol by volume, 12 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this big old oil can is from Foster's, but it does have a Best Buy date of August 28th of 2023. We're about three and a half months away from that date. So according to Foster's, we should be good. Now, this beer, um, I haven't had in a long time. I've had it a couple times. I remember not really enjoying it, but this beer was recommended to me by Jeff Bohm. So huge thanks to him, viewer of the channel. Um, I take uh, recommendations and uh, suggestions for Macro Monday. So if you have any, put them in the comments uh, section and I will try to get to them as soon as I possibly can. I have a list of about six to eight beers right now, but he was like, hey, I'd love to see you review a Foster's Lager. And I was like, all right. So here we are. Now, the only thing I remember about Foster's Lager was the tagline, which is Foster's, Australian for beer. However, if you talk to any Australians that drink beer, like a very good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, uh, Sam Smalley, they'll tell you that they don't really drink Foster's. Uh, Sam himself, if he has like a lower, cheaper um, macro uh, beer, although macro beer isn't that cheap in Australia, he goes for uh, Victoria Bitter. Uh, there's some that I think go for uh, Carlton Draft, but this is not one that you see that often in Australia, but it is Australians. Um, famous beer brand. So this is the most famous from Australia around the world, but in Australia, they don't really drink it as much as you would think. And this specific beer is brewed in the USA. As it says on here, it's brewed in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, it says brewed in the US with US and imported ingredients. And then it has the ingredients, water, barley malt, yeast, corn syrup, dextrose, and maltose, which is in parentheses after corn syrup and hops and it says corn syrup is used as part of the brewing process only they never use high fructose corn syrup great so anyway we'll see if i ruin the pour on this big ass uh oil can because um when i pour like growlers and stuff i usually mess it up so we'll see using the jenny glass as we do here on uh, macro on monday anyway let's give it a pour here so i'm you know i don't remember again much of this beer other than i am spilling it because again, these big ass cans, they suck to pour, just to be honest with you. Doesn't matter if it's a crawler, a growler, a big ass oil can, they just suck to pour. I always spill some of the beer. I always lose a little bit. In this case, I'm probably not gonna be as disappointed because again, I don't remember uh, really enjoying this one, but it's been so many years. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, that looks like your macro lager, that golden uh, yellow color, or golden straw color, maybe a little bit darker, has a lot of carbonation, a finger of a bright white soap suds. You look ahead, hold it up to the light. Yep, can see your hand through it, the whole nine. Kind of looks like Jenny Cream Ale <laughs> in the Jenny Cream Ale glass. Anyway, let's get a nose. Not getting anything, really. Swirled up here a little bit here. Yeah, I'm getting like a generic, like corny kind of malt bill. Like it has like that little bit of a sweeter, like corny sensation, a little bit malty, um, no real hops to speak of. Doesn't smell offensive, but I just can't smell a lot. It's just basically malt. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Mm -mm. It's a beer. Um, it's a beer. <laughs> There's not much more to say about it. It's inoffensive. Like, this isn't bad or anything. Biden, this one's a little bit bigger, 5%. Now, I did read that in Europe. I think this is 4%. In Australia, it's 4.9. Here in the U.S., it's 5. And, of course, with this being brewed in the U.S., I'm sure other var um, variations of this is brewed. Like, the Euro European one's probably brewed in, like, England or something. And the Australian one's probably brewed in Australia. But um, this has a little bit bigger of a body. This is like medium, like lower side of medium body. The mouthfeel has a nice crisp kind of sensation to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's crisp, it's effervescent. It's kind of what you expect from this beer. It's, it's pretty clean overall. The taste though, super simplistic. Very simplistic. It's up front, 
bready, grainy, corny kind of malt character. As it passes through, midway through the palate, get a little bit of like a, a nondescript like red fruit. I, this is where I usually say like red apple, red apple core. It's kind of in that realm, maybe like a white pear, slight fruitiness. And on the back of the palate has a little bit of like a slight grassy kind of floral bitterness, very slightly. This is very mildly bitter. But it's pretty, I'd say it's balanced because there is a nice semi to full-on dry finish. It's 5%, can't really tell. This is way worse. There we are, way worse. This is way better than I remember it. I remember not really enjoying this one. Is it anything to write home about? No. But I do appreciate that it's inoffensive. I do appreciate that it's pretty crisp on the palate. It's not, I guess as I continue to drink it, maybe it's not as balanced as I thought. Maybe it leans a little bit sweeter. But it's not overly sweet. Um, but I think after that can, I'll be like, I'm done with Foster's. Now, here's the thing. I could see that sweetness being something that somebody really enjoys and would want to drink multiple cans of this. Or if you can get this in six packs or 12 packs. I didn't really look to see. I just always remember it being in this big oil can. So when I saw it, I was like, I'm going to grab it. And it was relatively fresh. But there's nothing wrong with this one per se. But it's not like blowing my socks off as far as like a macro beer goes or a macro lager. It just kind of is what it is. If somebody handed this one to me, I would not be offended at drinking it. Like I wouldn't, it wouldn't be tough to put down a glass or a can of this. But... I don't think I would seek this out. It doesn't have enough of any real flavor outside of that slight maltiness up front and a little bit of that like um, fruitiness mid palate, but it's very minute. It's very bland for lack of a better word. But when you drink something like this, or a lot of people do, they want something that's inoffensive. You can throw back, you don't have to think about. And I think that's kind of what this beer is meant for. And Listen, I've had some really bad beers on the channel that have been craft beers that I couldn't finish and I just thought they were trash. I've had some macro beers I'm not a fan of. Rolling Rock, still not a fan of that I've reviewed on the channel. This, this I could get down with, um, you know, occasionally. So it's not bad. It's not anything that I love, but it's, it's okay. It's an all right beer. Like I've had much, much worse than this beer. Let's just say that. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, you try, at least for me, if I'm going to buy a cheap macro lager or cheap lager i want something that's not gonna uh, offend my palate to the point where like i can't drink you i could easily drink this i'm gonna drink the rest of this and i'm going to give a foster's lager i don't even know how to do this because you know how i do my for my shot here um i'm gonna give this a uh I'll go high 3.25. I'll go 3.3 .3 out of 5. i think that's a fair score for this um usually under three i would never drink it again between three and three, five, I drink it again, but I never buy this again. And I'll just be honest with you, I'll, I'll never probably buy this again on purpose. But again, I would easily, easily drink this again if I was at a party or it's over somebody's house at a barbecue and they just had this. And I no, don't know, I, I don't have a lot of friends that would do that. They would have other beers uh, in their cooler uh, for sure. But if somebody did, I, I'd have no issues grabbing this one. So price point availability, this was, it was $2.99 for that big um oil can um you put that into six packs you're talking like eight to nine dollars a little bit more expensive since it's technically this is not an import but it's an imported beer brand so it, it, they have like premium and it's like eh, not really they do have the premium l which i might have to review at some point and availability of fosters i'm sure you can find it in a lot of places across the world so um, i'm sure most of you have seen this one locally no matter where you are probably on your shelves at your local beer store maybe even grocery store so yeah if you've had this one before post in the comment section let me know you thought about this one huge thanks to jeff for the recommendation on this one um that's the whole point about these macro mondays uh are not that necessarily like i, I am reviewing and drinking them because i kind of want to revisit a lot of these that i haven't had in a long time or maybe some that i've never had and i would not pick up foster's log and review it on my own i just i wouldn't so that's why i started macro monday uh to kind of get you guys involved but also i want to hear what people recommend in terms of uh, macro ask beers and macro loggers for the most part so i have like i said about six or seven on my list right now that i'll get to over the next probably two or three months if you have again any recommendations post in the comment section i'm up for pretty much to review any beer uh that i can grab that sounds Okay. I mean, even if it sounds gross, I'll still probably review it. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for, you know, oh yeah, 5%. You can't really tell. I mean, nowadays for me, after drinking craft beer, like I don't ever get any kind of alcohol stringency or feeling it from a beer that's like five or five and a half percent or less. It just doesn't happen. 
If somebody drinks like a 4% light beer and they drink this, they might notice like the little fuller body and maybe the alcohol. But for somebody like me who you know, probably averages seven and a half, eight percent per beer, like this, I'll never, I'll never taste probably the alcohol in something like this. So I, I always forget to mention like the alcohol if I, if I taste it or I not, I don't, but I really don't. So anyway, appreciate it to the next one. Cheers.